Today I'm really glad to have this chance to share with you uh, the experience in China of using transparency, data, social media, and multi-party collaboration to tap into the pollution control. Okay. So uh, during the past 30 years, China has made remarkable progress in economic development, uh, but also the massive industrialization and the fast rate of creating factories also came along with the mindset of pollute first and clean up later, you know, with the idea that there weren't really strong penalties or laws for polluters. So as a result, air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution have exposed hundreds of millions of people to health hazards and our resources being consumed in an unsustainable way and the environmental damage has become one of the major causes of uh, some of the social instability concerns in our country. So IPE's uh, founding director, Ma Jun, he believes that um, to solve pollution issue in China is not just a matter with technology or money, it's the environmental management system which is the biggest barrier. So the laws and regulations have not been enforced. So for polluting factories, the, the, laws, the cost of violations remains lower than the cost of compliance. So factories lack motivations to clean up. So he thinks that a challenge with such magnitude and complexity cannot be addressed without extensive participation from the public. But the prerequisite of that is the access to information because people need to be informed before they can get involved. So with that in mind, he decided to build an organization to focus on promoting environmental information transparency and the public participation. So the first project IPE did is to build a national database on environment and pollution, you know, to help people access to environmental quality data, like the air quality data, the water quality data, and also the online real-time monitoring data for factories across China. This is uh, air emissions data, wastewater discharge data, and most importantly, to help people access to a list of polluters in all of the 31 provinces in our country. Um, so essentially what we do as an organization is to collect um, data, scattered data from uh, different government sources, agencies, and we compile that data into a searchable database to allow people to see and to use it. So, um, uh, we, st we started with uh, very, very limited data, but then over the past years we, you know, are able to, to get more, to collect more. The reason for that, in large part, because the policies requiring the information to be disclosed to the public. So once there is a policy basis for that, then we can track and monitor where the information is missing, and then we can um, sort advocate for the greater disclosure or even advocate for new policies. So like Andrew mentioned, uh, in 2008, there's a regulation passed on open government information. And then um, in 2013 and 2014, China actually released the real-time monitoring data for over 15,000 factories across China. So when she's what IPE is working with. The background of that is basically um, in 2013, IPE and worked with uh, 26 environmental NGOs launched a total transparency initiative and calling for the, to make this big push for the disclosure of real time monitoring data for air emissions and wastewater that was being collected by the factories across, uh, by, the, by the government uh, across the factories in China but not disclosed to the public. So those 15,000 factories are the major sources of pollution in our country. And they together are responsible for about 65% of the total emissions. So we called on the government to make that public, inform public information because we believe if people can see with their own eyes that some of the factories are not complying with standards, factories are causing the pollutions in their cities, there will be a better chance to motivate them to change. So um, we thought that the process would take years, and then to our surprise, the government actually passed the regulation and made, required that to, to happen in 2014. So we collect the data from 13 provincial platforms and we created a user-friendly mobile app called the Blue Map 
to um, pro provide this government information and transforming this relatively complex data into something readily accessible and um, easy and understandable for people and organizations around the world. So when you open the app, uh, you can see any of the companies with environmental non-compliance in the color red. So anyone can check that on their cell phone. And not only that, they can share the information through social media. Um, so you can imagine by putting the information under public supervision, the local officials cannot protect those polluting factories forever. Because hour by hour, it shows quite clear that some of them are breaking our laws. So to show you an example, um, in 2014, a major steel, manufacturer, uh, major steel manufacturer in Shandong province exceeded emission standards by 10 times, but claimed, we don't think this issue is that important. And then the local app users reported this company using social media. And uh, the government weighed in and led to the enforcement and the shutdown of three polluting production lines. Um, so, you know, people start tweeting, people tagging local officials' account, tagging local NGOs' account. And in this process, we see more than 800 companies started to openly address their environmental issues due to the pressure generated from this public supervision. So, another, uh, yeah, another function in our app, in our app um, like and Andrew just mentioned, the government in 2016, they launched a black and smelly river. <laughs> Um, aiming to clean up a lot of the polluted uh, urban rivers and waters. Um, so we integrated that reporting platform into our app. So people can actually, when you discover a polluted river, you can take, up your, take your phone and then take a picture, uh, upload a picture and put your own description of it, like fill in the information like the color, the smell, and then you submit. And that gets sent directly to the, government, uh, the government's reporting platform and they will respond each and every one of these on the app. So you can see there's an example here, here basically saying uh, we, re we received your report and we are in the process of investigating, and after we've done their investigation, they will put up a cleanup, uh, cleanup action deadline for that, and people actually supervise the cleanup actions using their cell phone. Um, so in addition to this uh, real-time monitoring data and also this public participation, on tackling the water pollution. We also compiled a list of polluters in all of the 31 provinces in our country and the list of their records, their environmental violation records. So we started with about 2,000 of them and then with the expansion of transparency in China, we now the number has topped to about a million. So people access the information and how to motivate change. We decided we need to use this data to tap into the consuming power. So um, China is not only the factory of the world, we are, not, we are also a rising power of consumption. So in 2007, you know, IP launched a Green Choice initiative to call on the consumers to pay attention to, their, to the environmental, to corporate environmental uh, performance and then to pressure the brands to green their supply chains in China. Uh, so this green choice is a special way of, of green consumption. It's not like people working directly on the polluting factory. You know, we are going through a medium, we are going through the brand. Uh, so we need to use this green supply chain as a lever to leverage change of the large amount of uh, polluting factories. Um, so in the past, you know, brands tend to choose suppliers solely based on the price and the quality. And, um, you know, the suppliers had an incentive to shortcut environmental, pollution, environmental control in order to offer the lowest prices possible. And in that process, a lot of the waste dumping in our backyard, and without evidence of data, when we engage with those brands, they would say, well, I don't know who are polluting and who are not. So in China, I only buy from the cheapest. And now that excuse can, can no longer work because now we can tell them that we happen to have some data that can help you. So with our database, when they search the name of any of the given suppliers, they will instantly know whether that supplier have government-sourced government environmental violation records. So 
we turned this database into a supply chain management tool uh, to pressure those brands to make commitment not to source from polluting factories in our country, not to source those who have openly violated the laws in our country, and um, to push their suppliers with environmental violations to improve. Um, so that has triggered a number of brands to start using our database. Um, so with more and more brands getting on board, we find that scorecards and rankings help. So IP and the Natural Resources Defense Council in the US, um, we co-launched this um, CITI index, the Corporate Information, Corporate Environmental, Corporate Information Transparency Index to benchmark brands' environmental performance, to benchmark their uh, environmental management, uh, supply chain environmental management, management performance in China. Um, so last year, the CITI um, index evaluation covers 267 uh, global and Chinese brands. And this is last year's top 30. So most of them you must be very familiar with. Um, those are the, the global leaders in environmental management of their supply chains in China. So not only they are the proactive users of this system, but also they are pushing real changes on the ground. Um, so being on the top 30 doesn't necessarily mean their supply chain is the cleanest. What it means is that they are actually being transparent about solving issues and also pushing changes on the ground. So for example, Apple, um, Apple actually ranks the top for four years in a row. Um, and at the very beginning, the Apple was one of the most resistant brands to IP's work, but that's another story. Um, so Apple actually now uh, supply the screen their entire supplier list for China against the violation records in our database every month and to identify which supplier has environmental violation issue and then to push them to push them to contact us to transparently addressing those issues and to implement corrective actions. So another leading brand, also other leading brands also incorporated this um, supply chain management system into their sourcing standards. So Last year, we have 57 brands to leverage their purchasing power to motivate it more than 1,000 suppliers um, to take corrective actions. And then many of them also undergo the uh, third party audit under the supervision of uh, professionals and local NGOs and also in sometimes uh, local community representatives to rectify the correct the to rectify their corrective actions. Um, yeah, this year we launched a new project um, called the Green Supply Chain, uh, Green Green Supply Chain Map. And so it openly links leading brands uh, disclosed supplier list to the environmental violation records, real-time monitoring data in our database. So we have seven uh, brands already volunteer to join the map. Uh, so they put their logos on the, the factories of their suppliers on the map. So anyone, any consumers anywhere in the world can click on that and learn whether their suppliers are uh, meeting their environmental commitment and whether they are in compliance with uh, China's environmental laws. So um, finally, China is currently the, the factory of the world but we also see some migration of uh, supply chains to other, uh, to our neighboring countries. And um, in, that, in that process, there's a risk of uh, pollution migrated uh, along with that. So we are also very happy to see that a lot of the uh, growing interest uh, in our uh, neighboring countries to review the practice, to learn, the, uh, to learn uh, from the, the lessons we have now in China to try to solve the pollutions in their country. So together, we hope that we can use the data to connect the missing dots and to bring back the blue skies and clear water. Thank you very much.